Welcome to the channel, guys. Today's video is going to be a deep dive into the details of the new America Dixon shoe, more so focusing on the Flick Shield and the idea of is it something that is new and is really going to be helpful for the shoe, or is it more so going to be a marketing ploy to possibly differentiate the shoe between that and a lot of the other shoes? Because looking at a lot of the lineup for the new America catalogs, the shoes don't really have a standout between one another besides maybe a few tweaks on the models. And we'll kind of go into that as we look at some of the shoes side by side to see what the differences really are. So on the new upcoming shoe release thread on the Slap forums, the America TM has been kind of giving a little bit more of the details for the new Dixon shoe that was coming out to go along with their video release green. And he decided to share some of the shoe comments and the details with us. And so looking at the shoe right here, we have the Dixon, which features the new Flick Shield, which is the internal rubber layer that goes from the toe all the way to the outside of the side paneling layer to have a little bit of a color pop and also show that there is rubber underneath the shoe. Now, looking at the coverage of the Flick Shield, I personally would not have it actually bow down where it does right here. I would not have it bow down. I would just have it completely just cover because if you're like me, I will destroy the whole side. And for me, it was something that it's nice to be able to see just how much it actually does cover without having to tear through the shoe and skate it to be able to understand where it actually protects. And this is something that they're really putting a lot of effort into marketing for the shoe, which is the Flick Shield. Because I don't know about you guys, I've never skated the Wino G6 myself because I just don't wear Volks. I don't like to wear Volks. I've tried them before, they just are not for me. But when wearing thinner shoes, however, I've skated in a lot of thin toed shoes, they just wear down really, really fast. And the last couple of Americas that I've worn, they were good, but they could have lasted a little bit longer. Going through and not even doing that many kickflips per day, I went through some of the toes within maybe about three weeks. I'm talking full through the rubber. And with this, they are really pushing that the Flick Shield is something new, innovative, and is going to really guarantee that the shoe is going to last even longer. And when seeing what they're talking about on here sorry for the product plug i've talked about the flick shield on the dixon so i just wanted to share a photo of what it actually looks like underneath with a g6 foam insole for 65 bucks 80 for the burgundy colorway which features wolverine pick suede to last even longer which is a cool little addition to the the shoe where it makes it last even longer because pick suede really is very durable and it's something that is now being featured on the dixon so people were giving it a little bit of criticism on the forum. So someone said, so it's just a more or less an upgraded wino. Yeah, I think America TM has touched on this already. John likes the wino a lot. So it's more or less a revamped wino, but MSRP is about the same price. So you get a better shoe for close to the same price. Don't quote me on that, but I think it was something like that. I'm stoked for it to drop. Yeah, revised lacing panels and more ankle padding will definitely be more durable, especially with new Flick Shield, even though the normal Wino G6 seems real durable per the wear tested video I was just checking out for reference, linked in the next line, the Wolverine Pig Suede looks good too. And the America TM decided to write back, yes, you both are correct. It's got some additional features than the Wino G6, two of them being the Flick Shield and the other being the Desert Grip Tread. The price is $65 minus the Burgundy Colorway, which features Wolverine Pig Suede, so you get a better bang for your buck compared to the Wino G6. And so with looking at the shoe, you do actually get to see some of the details. So I really like for the shoe that they have gone the extra step to make a vulcanized version of the Figgy Dose outsole because vulcanized shoes traditionally, especially the America ones, they're quite thin and the old pattern that they have like for the uh, provider and just the America symbol one, like you see the top half right here, the one where it's it's kind of reverse what this looks like, it's not really thick. And that's just from years of selling Americas that had that sole and seeing how the uh, Provo Slim was. 
the soles on the Volk shoes are really thin by comparison. And maybe it could be just because the rubber is a little bit more um, dense. So you don't need to have as much on there to get the same type of wear as you would something that's a little bit thicker but not quite as dense i'm not sure but i like for the details of the shoe that they went the extra step to make the sole on the bottom of the shoe not just the foxing tape but the actual uh, sole itself to be a little bit better than their traditional Volk shoes are especially because it's you know a pro model shoe and then you can see on the side right here you can see the flick shield where it kind of stands out a little bit to differentiate between that and the wino and for anybody that's questioning this, the reason that there's a little gem right there is because it's supposed to match John's ring. And so that's kind of a little uh, extra detail that he wanted in his shoe. And this is the Peak Suede Burgundy colorway. And so here's a little bit more criticism for the shoe that the America TM has been able to respond to. It's a Winer G6 with a fancy eyelet and a panel moved. And so they put a link to the coming soon America Dixon shoe. Um, fucking America, they gave up trying years ago. If you look at the catalogs that have been put out for the last couple of years, it kind of seems like that, especially with the shoes that they were going to put out, no longer are doing so. That really could have been a little bit better in the lineup than what is now. But, you know, that's just, I guess, a uh, personal opinion on the matter. But they decided to write back, nobody's given up on anything. Dixon was really involved with the process of a shoe, and it's what he wanted and likes to skate in. Not really trying to defend anything here, but there is more to the shoe than meets the eye. See the rubber strip on the side? That rubber is underneath the suede and goes all the way to the toe cap called Flick Shield. So if you end up ripping through the suede, you still have a big piece of rubber preventing you from getting a hole through the shoe. That burgundy colorway is also made with pick suede, which is a stronger suede made by the Midwest boot company Wolverine, which is another thing John was stoked on being from the Midwest. And for those who care, we actually just got a new shoe designer who we are stoked on and are in the process of putting out some rad stuff here in 2020. So a new shoe designer is awesome. It's always great to have somebody new in the building that can really kind of add a little bit of an edge to what's already possibly gonna be in the lineup to make something new and just interesting. But the thing is, the things that they've been putting out have been all the same. And this is kind of a little bit of proof of that because looking here, you have three shoes. The Dixon, 65 bucks. The Wino G6, 65 bucks. And the Wino Standard, 50 bucks. So they're really trying to push for the top two to be something that you should be skating in more than the Wino Standard, but I mean, price point wise, 50 bucks for that. If it's something that you're interested in, go for it. These are shoes, or these are pictures provided by the America website, by the way. So looking at these shoes, silhouette wise from a distance, they all look identical. Identical. Do not stand out really at all because from a distance, you would just see the same silhouette. Even looking at it right here, it looks like the same exact thing. Nothing that is gonna be anything to write home about, nothing that's gonna be you know, jumping up and down, enjoy, oh my God, this shoe is awesome, or this is brand new, I'm so, st it's cool that he's getting a pro shoe, but it really is something that looks all the same. The one feature I really wish they would've talked about because it's been an issue, especially if you look at the Wino standard, how it doesn't have any padding, along the collar. It's really nice that they put for even the Wino G6, it's called the Tough Cuff. And it's supposed to make it to where it's um, a little bit of extra padding and also some support right here on the heel. So that way you don't just have your Achilles tendon being dug into the whole time. Cause that was a huge pain for everybody that was wearing the original laced, the Romero laced and just other models that don't have any kind of collar uh, support at all and wearing the Romero 3 myself the Romero 2 I can't remember which one it looks exactly like the Wino standard um, that insole and the sole was amazing they should have just kept that one going but that shoe it had no collar support and it just killed my feet because of that or more my ankle and so I really wish they would advertise the tough cuff because that's something that would really benefit them to have a shoe advertised that's not going to just destroy your ankles but yeah, they unfortunately all look the same. And so someone asked him, what's up with the Dixons? They're dropping on Tuesday, which again, this video is well past the date that they released, but I wanted to make it after the fact because in what you'll see in, um, coming up soon, I've actually asked a question 
about the Flick Shield, and I wanted a response from America, but we'll cover that in just a second. Dropping on Tuesday, some shops have already gotten them in, and we like to give them a couple days of selling them before we do to get our customers to go support the local shops. And then a person went on there and gave his own review of the Dixon so far. Don't know what's up with the delay of the Dixons, but I got a pair when they accidentally went up on the site for an hour the day green came out. They have the desert tread that the provider shoe was originally supposed to have, same tread pattern as the Figgy Dose, but a Volk version. Other than that, some subtle upgrades to the Wino G6, better tongue straps, a little bit more premium feel to the shoe as a whole. The rubber flick shield underlay, which is uh, very low profile to the point it's unnoticeable. It doesn't add any stiffness like I feared. The shoe still breaks in instantly. Feel like the rubber will flick nicely when I wear through the suede too. Great Volk for 65 bucks. And the TM wrote, thanks for the support and review. Glad to hear you're liking them. So. Something positive because I did a lot, a lot of negativity earlier. I didn't want to overload it with everything negative. I want to put some positive into it, and especially for any of you guys that are actually interested in the shoe, you can know that the rubber layer underneath the toe cap flick shield is not going to be anything that's going to create the shoe to be stiff. Uh, it's just going to let the shoe be as it is and protect your feet when you start to wear through it. So again, good look at the flick shield as well. It looks like too. It kind of is dipping a little bit low so i think right here is where the actual flick shield starts and then it comes down and then back up again just i mean just from the picture it's it's a little grainy so i could just be you know seeing things from that but uh again nice tread nice flick shield and it's something again that they're marketing now with that i asked a question and i knew going into it it was semi-loaded question because it's something that they would have to then talk about that's already been implemented into their shoes. Now they're marketing it for the shoe and why. Could you tell me what exactly differentiates the Flick Shield from the rubber layer that's already inside a lot of the shoes aside from maybe a little more coverage along the side of the shoe? I'm not asking to mock or anything bad. I'm curious because nowadays a lot of brands, including America, have been utilizing internal rubber layers under the toe through the side paneling for both keeping the shape vamp of the shoe for as long as possible before it bags out and also to add durability to the shoe once the outer material is busted through to add extra life to the shoe and it's become a standard in most shoes is this something new or that you've now named the inner rubber layer to add durability again i knew this was a loaded question and i had a feeling i probably was not going to get an answer to this right away and it's been at least a week or two that I wrote this, I still have not gotten a response. And America TM has been quite active on the Slack forum. So he saw this, skimmed right past it. Because this is nothing, again, that's nothing new to the shoe world at all. And I have a couple examples for you guys. So uh, with two main examples, which is the Addy Tough from Adidas and the Duracap from Vans, I wanted to give some photo examples of the two that are already being implemented. A lot of other brands do it as well, but these brands have actually named it. I'm not sure if, you know, Nike is named theirs, DVS and S or Etni, whatever. So I don't know if they've named it, but these two companies as well that I know of have named it. So I wanted to use them as an example. You can go online to find the rest if you um, wish to do so. But you can see here, this is a wear tested cut through uh, Lucas Premier ADV. And you can see on the toe, it's very distinct that there is a rubber layer right here. And if there would not be cut through right here, you'd be able to see that it stretches all the way to right here. So um, this is simply just to keep the shape and to keep it breathable. But this rubber layer right here, however, is what helps to keep the shoe lasting longer because from skating the Lucas Premieres myself, which I did a review on, um, it'll be linked above in the annotations if you want to check that out. But wearing through the shoe, I have had a couple of them that I blow through the suede, not quickly, but a little quicker than I expected. And the rubber was what really helped to keep it lasting even longer before I was able to really need to put shoe goo on there. So something nice, little addition to the shoes as a whole. And then the next one is for Vans. So you have here, you can see, and it's because of the coloring, it's very, very uh, sand out-ish. So you have, this is the Burl Pro, and 
This shoe, it's funny because they still add Duracap to the shoe. Um, right here, the white is the Duracap. So this is the internal rubber layer that is put on the shoe to help it last even longer for most of the shoes nowadays, especially the pro models. And it's funny because it actually comes back really far. So you can see where the eyelets and the tongue are starting right here. And it goes back quite far in the shoe. And this shoe not only has the internal rubber toe cap, but it has two other ones. So you have this rubber toe cap on the outside and then this toe bumper, which is made of suede. So this shoe actually technically has three toe caps. We have the shoe that the Dixon was modeled after, which is the Wino G6. This is the Jeremy Liabre's colorway, which you can see his dog in the insole right here. And then you have the poured in uh, G6 insole right here. And this is something I covered too in the, uh, the Marana XT review that I did, I wish they would thicken up the toe a little bit on insoles. It's not just America, I'm just saying in, uh, brands in general, because I don't land heel heavy, I land toe heavy. And so seeing how thin it is, and just how absolutely ridiculous. Again, this is a Volk shoe. So take a look before, you know, my brain's down. So for you guys that are looking at Volk shoes and just wanting protection and durability and just to be able to skate in them for as long as possible, there you go. That's how ridiculously thin those shoes are. So that's why I don't jump down anything. When I used to skate in Volks, I, I tried not to jump down anything Volk because there you go. So, but back to the original point, you have right here this white layer that is the interior rubber toe cap. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in real quick. And we have right here again, the internal rubber toe cap. You can see it comes down to right here as well. And this is where you have that first bend. So usually if you have a shoe and it has quite a few bends in it, if you take the grab from the heel and the toe and you bend it in and you see multiple different creases, the crease that's closest to the edge of the toe is usually where the internal rubber toe cap stops. So you have right here, it actually goes back quite far. It's not that much farther off than the flick shoe will be like out to here on the sides, which I think it's funny because the it doesn't show the flick shield actually covering across the toe. It just shows that it covers around it, whereas this one actually goes completely across the toe. So with that said, again, this is just the uh, Wino G6, and the, here you have the, the three again, the Dixon, Wino G6, and the Wino Standard. So looking at the shoes, they all look very much identical. Identical. There's nothing that really silhouette-wise stands them out from one another. Everything about the shoes all look the same. So verdict on this is it's it probably is really good durability-wise, but it's one of those where you've been implementing this type of thing already. You just now are bringing it back a little bit farther on the sides and finally giving it a name. And that's why it's not something that is probably going to make the shoe sell off the shelves. It might help with people who already like the Wino to now get the shoe because again, it's price pointed the same. It's got a better sole and a better traction and for that matter. And it has some rubber that's brought back even farther than what's already there to help with durability. But other than that, as far as bringing people that are new into America, I think this is something that is a little bit too little too late because it's something that's already implemented by other brands that are utilizing the exact same thing. Again, it, even if you guys are wearing the authentic and era vans, if you feel on the toe that there is an interior rubber toe cap in there, even something as simply designed as the uh, authentic and era has something like that too. So it's not something that's new. It's something that has, again, been implemented so much. And I think it's just, again, too little too late. But I hope success for the shoe, just because I like America, I hope that they continue, and I want to see them do better. But I just think, as far as the Dixon compared to the Wino G6, is a good shoe. But as far as bringing hype to the shoe, it's a marketing strategy that only works for this shoe, and that's it. That's it. So I'm curious just to see what, what happens from here with them. But... That's going to be it for this video. If you like this video and want to see more, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification to be notified whenever a new video comes out. If you like this video, please give it a like and a share so we can help to grow the channel for me to be able to do more videos like this for you guys. 
and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.